Rose, Lily, and Jasmine enter a flower shop on Mother's Day to buy some flowers for their moms. One of them buys Lily's, the second one, Rose's, and the third one, Jasmine's. It's funny, said the lady with roses. <laughs> we bought roses, jasmines, and lilies, but none of us bought the flowers matching her name. <laughs> Lily replies, whoa, you're right. Can you guess which kind of flowers each of the girls bought? We know that the lady who bought the roses isn't Rose, and she's not Lily either, because Lily replied to her words. So Jasmine bought roses, Rose bought lilies, and Lily bought jasmines. Bob also bought some flowers for his wife. All of the flowers he has are orchids, except two. All of the flowers he has are hibiscuses, except two. And all of the flowers he has are roses, except two. Can you guess how many flowers Bob has? Bob purchased only two flowers, neither of which are orchids, hibiscuses, or roses. At the end of his shift, the barista checks a tip jar. There are five coins inside the jar. Five people take these five coins home. However, one coin is still left in the jar. How can this be possible? Simple, the last person took the jar along with the coin. Therefore, one coin still remains in the jar. Three best friends participate in a bicycle race, but one of them is cheating. Can you guess who? The person in the middle. She rides an electric bike. Four people wake up on a deserted island. In a while, they get really hungry and go for a walk to find some food. Amy finds a bush with berries. Peter finds a closed can of beans. Fred finds this beautiful apple tree. And Nina discovers a hive full of honey. Only one of these options is safe. Can you decide which one? A creepy cobra is hiding in the bush. The beans expired 10 years ago. Oh. It's not safe to take honey from the hive without a protective suit. So. Apples are the safest option. It has 13 hearts, yet it's never alive. What is it? A pack of cards. I have three eyes and all are in a straight line. When my red eye opens, everything freezes. What am I? I'm a stoplight. I'm made of wood, but you can't saw me down. What am I? I'm sawdust. Wendy is trapped in a creepy castle. It has only two possible exits. The first door leads to a room constructed from magnifying glass. The blazing hot sun instantly fries anyone who enters and there's a fire-breathing dragon waiting behind the second door. Can you help Wendy escape? She should wait until nighttime and go through the first door. Can you write the number 45 only using the number 4? Here's the correct way. Tim lives in an apartment building. He comes home in the evening and finds out that his car is wrecked. He also sees three neighbors standing nearby. Tim wants to find out who's guilty, so he questions them. Henry replies, I was just skating around the block. I didn't touch your car. Hmm. Will says, I was playing basketball with my friends. And Shelly replies, I've spent all day working in the coffee shop on the first floor of our building. Can you spot the liar? Hmm. Shelly. She said that she'd been visiting the coffee shop, but it's closed for good. Bella wants to rob an old lady's house. She approaches the door and sees that the door is opened. <laughs> Bella freaks out and runs away. Can you see what's wrong here?
there's no hole for a key. There's a five-letter word that has three consonants, and they are all the same. Also, the word has two different vowels. There's something wrong associated with this word. Can you guess it? Error. Sam is a restaurant owner. He enters the space, and the waiter whispers to him, Sir, there's a famous millionaire eating lunch at one of the tables. Ooh. Sam looks around and sees these four persons. Can you guess who's rich? The first guy is wearing a fake Nike hoodie. This elegant woman has a fake Gucci bag. The third person is wearing torn shoes. And this lady is holding the keys from the brand new Ferrari parked behind the window. So, she's definitely not poor. Take a look at these nine letters. Can you form a nine letter word using these letters? Don't forget to use each letter. The word is mythology. What has lots of eyes but can't see? The correct answer is a potato. I'm the part of the bird that's not in the sky. I can swim in the ocean and yet remain dry. What am I? I'm a shadow. An electric train is traveling southwest at 95 miles per hour, and the wind is blowing northeast at 95 miles per hour. Can you guess which direction the smoke blows? There's no smoke with an electric train. What five-letter word becomes shorter when you add two letters to it? The correct answer is short. The more of me here, the less you see. What am I? I'm darkness. What building has the most stories? Library, of course. Bob gets lost in the gym. He's wandering around and finds three doors leading outside. There are dangerous lions behind the first door. There's a giant pterodactyl breathing fire behind the second door. And behind the third door, there's a tank with hungry sharks. Nobody can cross this tank and stay alive. Which door should Bob choose to survive? To crack this riddle, Bob should remember that pterodactyls don't breathe fire. That's what dragons do. Also, pterodactyls went extinct many millions of years ago, so Bob should choose the second door. I'm tall when I'm young, and I'm short when I'm old. What am I? I'm a candle. There's a one-story house in which everything is pink. Pink walls, pink doors, pink furniture. Can you guess the color of the stairs? It's a one-story house. There are no stairs. I'm taken from a mine and shut up in a wooden case from which I'm never released. And yet I'm used by almost everybody. What am I? I'm a pencil lead. Miss Smith is a billionaire. She has three people living in her house with her. Adam, her reckless son, Peter, her noisy brother, Hello. and Sebastian, the loyal housekeeper. One day, Miss Smith finds this message written on her calendar. Can you help her spot the betrayer? Ooh. The circled numbers mean the months. It's her son, Adam. I can be long or I can be short. I can be grown 
and I can be bought. I can be painted or left bare. I can be round or a square. What am I? I'm your fingernails. Danny is a famous vampire hunter. He gets an invitation to a small town. There's a vampire living in this town, but nobody can catch this dangerous creature. Danny decides to look in the local restaurant. He asks the staff to show him security camera archives to check among the restaurant visitors over the years and soon identifies the vampire. Who's the vampire? There he is. Vampires don't age and also don't eat food. Danny takes a walk around the town and spots another creepy detail. Can you see it too? There's a zombie hiding over there. What about this location? Can you spot any zombies here? Hello, great job. Can you count the number of triangles in the given picture? What about this picture? How many triangles can you see? You can pause this video if you need extra time. There are 104 triangles in this picture. November 4th, 2021. It's been raining for three days, but even this is not enough to wash away all the dirt of the city. For several hours, Detective Sadfist had been sitting in his car near the house of a Hollywood star. The detective is sure that someone is going to rob her house. The actress doesn't believe in this. In the distance, he sees a tall man in a hat. He approaches the door and knocks. The actress opens the door and greets the stranger. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought it was my house, he says. It has a very similar design. The actress closes the door and the stranger leaves. The detective gets out of the car and arrests him because the man is a thief. Why is the detective so sure about this? If the stranger had really thought it was his house, he wouldn't have knocked on the door. He'd have tried to open it with a key. The detective takes the thief to the station. The rain is finally over. It promises to be a long night, so the detective goes to buy a coffee. At this moment, the radio reports an arson to the south of the central square. No time for coffee. Sadfist hits the gas pedal and drives to the place. He notices the flames from afar, Two houses are burning. The detective notices several more police cars. A police officer tells him that one house belongs to a rich businessman. There's a lot of money inside. The owner of the second house is a poor artist. His paintings are burning now. Which house will the detective go to first to put out the fire? He's not a firefighter, so he won't approach either house. After watching the flames for a while, Detective Sadfist gets into his car and realizes he can't take it anymore. He needs some sleep. He doesn't want to go home because his house reminds him of her, and he doesn't need those memories at the moment. He decides to rent a hotel room. The detective asks the hotel administrator to wake him up at 7 a.m. Of course, the man says, but don't forget to call me first, then I'll come to wake you up. One call will be enough. What does the detective need to do to make the lazy guy wake him up? He can set an auto call for 6.50 a.m. The detective enters the room and falls on the bed. At this moment, the door starts opening slowly. The faces of people he has thrown into jail appear out of the darkness. The detective sits up on the bed and the door slams shut. 
At first, Sadfist doesn't understand what just happened. But then, he lets out a sigh of relief. It was just a nightmare. How has he figured it out? It's already light outside. It was dark when the detective checked into the hotel. That means he was asleep. A new day, a new case. The detective is going to the countryside. A girl has disappeared there. Sadfist intends to find her. He stops his car near three houses. They're located on the ocean beach. Three roads lead to the houses. Sharp rocks and shards of glass cover the first road. The second road is swarming with snakes. Lava is boiling on the third road. Which path should the detective choose? The ocean will soon cool the lava and turn it into stone. The detective follows the third path. He enters the house and finds the missing girl there. She confesses that she stayed late at a party, and her mother was so worried that she called the police. Detective Sadfist arrives at an office building in the center of the city. He goes up to the top floor. Here, a rich banker is lying unconscious. Someone hit him on the head and stole important documents from his safe. There's a tape recorder on the banker's desk. The detective turns it on. The banker's voice comes from the microphone. My nephew. He called me a few minutes ago and said he would break into my office and take my documents. I don't know what to do. If something happens to me, you should know. My nephew, Michael, is to blame. Oh no, I think I heard the elevator doors open. I think it's him. He's here. The recording ends. We must find his nephew, one of the police officers says. I don't think so. The nephew has done nothing wrong. The man just wanted to frame him. Sad Fist answers. How did the detective figure that out? Someone rewound the tape in the recorder to the very beginning. It's unlikely that the nephew did it. He'd get rid of the recorder. The detective leaves the office, gets into the elevator, and meets an old concierge. They go down very slowly. The concierge looks attentively at the buttons. The detective asks him, what's the matter? The concierge answers that five people live on the 35th floor. Three live on the 20th floor. Four people live on the 7th floor. And seven people live on all other floors. The building has 40 floors in total. The concierge asks, which elevator button is pressed most often? What do you think? The answer is the first floor button. It's pressed by every resident. The detective gets into the car and drives to a cafe. He hasn't eaten anything since yesterday. He orders an omelet and opens a newspaper. There's a riddle on the front page. In the winter, a guy went to a nearby village to meet with his friends. He knew he needed to go through a forest, a small field, then a forest again, and only after that would he reach his goal. The guy started his journey. He went through the forest, the field, another forest. But then, he saw a big river. How can he cross it? The detective grins because he knows the answer. And what about you? It was winter. The river was frozen. A waiter approaches Sad Fist and puts his omelet with coffee on the table. The detective eats, then calmly gets up from the table and heads to the kitchen. There, he meets a masked robber. The detective arrests him. How did he know there was a criminal in the kitchen? Rob in Kitchen was written on the coffee mug. The robber is detained by other police officers and Sadfist goes back to his car. He has a new case. He arrives at an antique store. Some swindler has deceived the store owner and sold him a fake coin. The coin has a date on it, 175 BCE. It looks old. The analysis has shown that the coin is ancient. 
The store owner says he thought it was really made before the current era. How did he eventually understand the coin was a fake? People who lived before our era couldn't write BCE on their coins. Sadfist leaves the store. Oh no, his shoes are torn. The detective gets into his car and goes to a shoe store. He parks, gets out of his car, and he sees three stores. The best shoes in the city, the sign on the first building claims. The best shoes in the world is written on the second building. But the inscription on the third store is the best. Detective Sadfist smiles and goes there. What's written on the third store? The best shoes on the street. After doing some shopping, Sadfist drives down the street and sees a group of suspicious people standing next to a building under construction. The detective stops the car. People notice him and run away in the other direction. The detective runs after them. It seems they've managed to escape, but Sadfist doesn't think so. He calls for backup and tells the police he's caught a gang of hooligans. They're all hiding in a transformer box. How did the detective know that? After all, he lost sight of the hooligans at some point. The hooligans ran on uncured concrete and left footprints leading to the transformer box. Oh no! Now, Sadfist's new shoes are stained with wet concrete. The detective gets into the car and goes to the laundry. There, he meets the owner who finds out about another crime. The owner claims that someone has taken a huge amount of money from his safe. But the detective realizes that there was no thief. The owner stole the money himself to get compensation from the insurance company. Sadfist has noticed this laundry gets robbed too often. But the owner hasn't changed the locks or strengthened security yet. But how can the detective prove the money hasn't been stolen? There are banknotes in that washing machine over there. That's where the owner hid the money. Tired, the detective returns home. His apartment is a mess. Since she left him, the house has turned into a dump. A mouse squeaks somewhere in the room. Inspect the apartment and help Sadfist catch the rodent. See that box with a hole? It looks like the mouse has chewed through it. Sadfist catches the tiny animal, but does nothing to it. He decides it will be his pet. The detective's mood is as bad as it always is. Kim and Ashley are best friends. They decided to spend summer vacation in Italy together. They were very lucky to buy cheap plane tickets. Their flight was at 10 a.m. Unfortunately, when the girls arrived at the airport, they realized it was the wrong one. Now they have two options. Take a high-speed train for 100 bucks to go to the right airport, or stay here and buy tickets for a later flight for $400. What should they choose? The second option. Look at the clock on the wall. It's 9.55 a.m. The boarding for their flight is already over. They won't make it even if they take the high-speed train. Kim and Ashley bought new tickets. They went to the airport restaurant to drink coffee. But one weird detail scared Kim away. She suggested they should leave that place as soon as possible. What did Kim see? This woman over there is a zombie. Wow, how did she get through security? When it was finally time to board the plane, it turned out there were no more economy class seats left. Kim and Ashley were offered to fly in business class. There, the girls saw three people. When the flight attendant served them fresh juice, she whispered that Kim and Ashley were extremely lucky. They were about to travel next to a famous Italian billionaire. Can you guess which of these passengers is the billionaire? This glamorous lady is a good candidate, but it's very unlikely a billionaire will wear a 100% polyester coat. This guy's business suit is very elegant, but look at his shoes. They seem quite cheap and worn out. This funny gentleman must be the real billionaire. 
Although his outfit is rather casual, his gold watch looks very expensive. The glamorous lady began to chat with Kim and Ashley. She told them she had recently visited an exotic island with her friends. Then she showed the girl some pictures. When the lady went to the bathroom, Ashley whispered to Kim, This woman is a liar. She photoshopped this picture. How did Ashley know that? It's all about the shadows. They all look natural, except for this one. The glamorous lady took a sip of her juice and started coughing. Suddenly, she fainted and fell into the billionaire's arms. He was ready to shout for help, but Kim stopped him, saying the woman was faking it. How did she know that? Look at the content of her bag. It's full of the billionaire's pictures and magazine articles. She also has a tattoo with his portrait on her leg. This woman is obsessed with him. It was lunchtime, and the billionaire offered Kim to play a game. There were three boxes. One of them contained a meal. There was a statement on each box, but only one of them was true. Can you help him figure out which box has food inside? If the food is in the first box, there are two true statements. And if the food is in the third box, there are also two true statements. But we need just one true statement. That's why the food can only be in the second box. Kim opened the box. She saw a delicious meal and a bank card. The billionaire said, congratulations, you've won $5 million. Enjoy your trip. Kim and Ashley landed in Rome and went to get their luggage. It turned out that Ashley had had the same suitcase as two other passengers, and they had a little quarrel. Can you help distribute the three suitcases among these people? The first suitcase belongs to this woman. It's covered in her dog's hair. The second suitcase has some traces of a star sticker. You've probably noticed it before on Ashley's bag. And the third suitcase belongs to this man. Since Kim and Ashley were now very rich, they decided to find a real estate agent who could help them rent a luxurious villa. They wanted to spend their vacation there. The agent showed them three houses. Can you help the girls choose the best one? There are cockroaches in the first house. Mm, They won't make very pleasant neighbors. The second house is too old. There's a crack in the wall, which doesn't look safe. And the third house looks pretty good. As for the pool, it can be easily cleaned. Yes! Kim and Ashley left the villa and went sightseeing. When they returned, they found out that someone had stolen their passports from the safe. The girls called the police, and they interrogated three suspects. The chef was too busy making dinner for Kim and Ashley. The cleaner was dealing with the pool all day, and the gardener said he had been outside planting flowers. He didn't notice anything suspicious. Who's lying? The gardener. If he planted the flowers, where are they? The police returned Kim and Ashley their passports and arrested the gardener. The next day, the girls went shopping. Sellers wanted to take advantage of rich and naive tourists and offer them overpriced souvenirs. Only one of these three items is a good deal. Can you guess which one? Take a look at this Venetian mask. It says made in China, which means that this mask can't be real. This magnet is of very low quality. The word Italy is spelled with an error. It simply can't cost $100. This blue cheese doesn't look fresh, but it's normal for this kind of product. This delicacy is the only thing that Kim and Ashley can buy here for a fair price. The ladies went to the local museum and got lost in its corridors. They found a strange basement with three doors. There was a time portal to the Middle Ages behind the first door. Behind the second door, there was an evil mummy. It cursed anyone who bothered it. Finally, the third door was protected with a laser alarm system. It cut through anything that touched the laser beams. Which door should the girls choose? The second one. The mummy is sleeping peacefully inside its sarcophagus. If Kim and Ashley are quiet and don't come close, they can just walk by it. 
When the girls got outside, they saw a crowd of reporters around the museum. Someone has stolen the most expensive painting. The police questioned three suspects. Giovanni, the cleaner, said he had been washing the bathroom when the theft happened. Hmm. Luca, the museum guide, saw a suspicious woman with a large folder not far from the crime scene. And Bianca, the suspicious woman, was just drawing sketches as part of her art school homework. Who's lying? Luca. He has a rolled canvas under his shirt. Kim and Ashley came to a restaurant to enjoy the local cuisine. But they noticed a vampire among the visitors. So the girls decided to leave. Which visitor is the vampire? This elderly lady is wearing sunglasses in the evening. Also, she doesn't have a shadow. Then Kim and Ashley took a boat trip. A local photographer took their picture and printed it on two similar t-shirts. Then he offered the girls to buy these souvenirs. But Kim noticed three differences between these pictures. Can you see them too? Here they are! The ladies came to a bakery. Kim ordered a salad and coffee, while Ashley wanted to eat something sweet. The barista offered her three remaining options. Help Ashley make the right choice. Someone has already tasted this cupcake. Ants live inside this donut. It's probably not very fresh. But this croissant is safe. The green color is pistachio glaze, not mold. In the evening, Kim and Ashley arrived at the villa. The owner was there, and he was furious. He hadn't received any rental payment because Kim and Ashley's card presented by the billionaire was blocked. Suddenly, they heard breaking news on TV. Some scammers had robbed the billionaire. All his accounts were empty. Three people commented on the situation. The billionaire's driver said his boss had many enemies. The billionaire's girlfriend complained that now she couldn't even afford a new haircut. And his PA said they would try to return the money soon. Ashley knew for sure that one of them was hiding something. But who? The girlfriend. If she had no money, how come she left the boutique with so many purchases? The owner of the villa offered Kim and Ashley a deal. If you manage to prepare my favorite cocktail, I'll forget about your debt. The girls had no choice, so they agreed. The man gave them the recipe, but the last ingredient was coated. Can you guess what ingredient it is? If you mix blue and yellow, you'll get green. So the ingredient must be green grapes. Next morning, Kim and Ashley woke up locked in a room with two doors as the only exit. If they chose the wrong door, they would stay in the room forever. And if they picked the correct door, they would end up with loads of jewelry, money, and designer clothing that would be enough for the rest of their lives. Wow. Two guards were standing in front of them. One guard always lied, while the other always told the truth. Kim and Ashley didn't know their identities. The girls could only ask one question. What should they ask? The question should be, if I asked the other guard which door leads to the treasures, what would he say? If they asked the guard who always tells the truth, he would say that the other guard would point to the wrong door. And if they asked the liar, he would point to the wrong door too. In either case, both guards would point to the wrong door. So Kim and Ashley should just choose the other door. Sam was walking in the mountains. He met a beautiful girl and spent the whole day with her. In the evening, he realized he didn't even know her name. He asked if he could take her out the next day. The girl agreed, but only if he guessed her name. Sam was upset, but luckily, the girl liked him too. She wrote something on a piece of paper. It was a hint. Can you figure out her name? Ignore the numbers and look at the letters. Together, they make up the name Regina. Sam rented a cabin on a beautiful deserted beach. He called Regina and invited her over. 
but she complained that she'd broken her leg. Sam offered his help and invited Regina to stay in his house until she recovered. He brought her to the cabin in his arms like a real gentleman. Regina was hungry and asked Sam to go buy some food. When Sam returned, he saw that someone had robbed his house. Regina said that she'd been sleeping and hadn't seen the robbers. Sam called the police and said, I guess my new girlfriend is a thief. Why did he think so? Take a look at the cast. At first, it was on the right leg, but now it's on the left one. The police arrested Regina. They also detained three suspicious men. Jake said that he'd been walking with his dog nearby. Bill said that he'd been taking pictures for his blog. And Fred said he always surfed on that beach. Can you guess which of them is Regina's accomplice in the robbery? It's Bill. Take a look at his arm. He has a tattoo with Regina's name. The next evening, prison guards intercepted a letter from Regina to Bill. But it was encrypted, and the ink was going to become invisible in 10 seconds. Can you crack the code to uncover the plan? It says, Escape Tonight. Emily was walking in the forest and got lost. A few hours later, she found a creepy cabin and knocked on the door. A witch opened the door and invited the girl to come in. She was having a birthday party. The witch locked the door and told Emily, I will let you go if you help me to divide these three chocolate bars among my five friends equally. How can Emily fulfill this task and escape? She should break each of the bars into five pieces. This way, everyone will get three pieces in total. Emily is jumping with a parachute. She has to land right now. There are four landing spots, a rainforest full of crocodiles and other animals, a deep well she shouldn't be able to climb out of, an erupting volcano, and a hot desert with no water. What should the girl choose? The last option. Look at the picture attentively. There's a city nearby. Emily met Sam online. They liked each other and agreed to meet in real life. Sam said he would be wearing a blue hat. When Emily arrived at the coffee shop, she noticed three guys wearing blue hats. They were standing facing away from her, so she couldn't see their faces. Can you help Emily figure out which one is Sam? Take a look at the mirror on the wall. The first guy has a wedding ring. The second one is wearing the coffee shop uniform. He must be a waiter, not a customer. And the third guy is Sam. He's holding a rose, ready for the date. Henry had had a crush on Emily since he was a first-year student. Finally, he plucked up his courage and asked the girl out. But she said no, because she had a boyfriend, Sam. Henry was very upset. One day, Emily was walking home. Suddenly, three guys came up to her. They wanted to take her money, but the girl didn't have any. She didn't know what to do. She tried to call 911, but the guy snatched the phone from her hand. Luckily, Henry happened to pass by that place. He saw what was happening, ran up to the guys, and yelled, Stay away from her! I've called the police! One of the criminals shouted, Let's go! Henry called the police! And the guys ran away. Emily said, Leave me alone, Henry. That was stupid. Why did she say so? The girl realized it had been a setup. Otherwise, how would the guys know Henry's name? Sam wanted to give Emily a perfect gift for New Year's, but he absolutely had no idea what to get her. He decided to check out what she saved in her shopping cart on her laptop. When Emily went to take a shower, Sam sneaked into her room and turned on the computer. It required a password, but Sam didn't know it. 
Luckily, there was a note lying next to the laptop saying 7337. Sam tried it, but it didn't work. What's the password? Sam should try 33333333777. Voila! Sam discovered that Emily was dreaming of having an electric piano. He went to a musical instrument store and bought the best piano he could get. On his way home, Sam realized that he'd forgotten his wallet at the cashier's desk. He returned, but the wallet wasn't there. The police arrived quickly and questioned three witnesses. The cashier said that she hadn't seen the wallet. Mike said that he'd come up to the cashier to ask about violins, but he didn't see any wallets. And Diana said that she'd been talking on the phone with her husband. Who stole the wallet? It was Mike. No one specified where Sam had left his wallet. Mike knew it because he had taken it. Mark, Sam's uncle, put a $100 bill inside his desk drawer and left for work. When he came back, the money was gone. He questioned three people. His wife said, I put the bill under the book on the desk. The gardener said, I put it inside the book between pages one and two. The cleaner said, I saw the bill sticking out of the book. I was afraid it'd get lost and moved it between page two and page three. Mark asked Sam to help him figure out who the thief was. After a while, the guy cracked the case. Do you know who stole the money? It was the gardener. Pages 1 and 2 are the opposite sides of the same sheet. Emily got a new job as a hairdresser. In the middle of her shift, her manager saw some hair strands on the floor and asked, That's weird. Whose hair is this? Look at the three ladies. Can you guess who this blonde hair belongs to? This dark-haired lady has natural gray hair, which means that the hair can't be hers. Look at this lady's backpack. She's a delivery worker, not a client. It means the hair on the floor belongs to this woman with blue hair. Emily gave her a haircut and dyed her hair blue. According to Emily's work contract, she has to do four haircuts, two hair dyes, and three stylings during one day. Each haircut costs $45. Hair dye is $70, and styling costs $20. Can you calculate how much she's earned today? The girl has earned nothing. Look at the sign on the door. They're closed on Sunday. How can we make sure that today is Sunday? Look at the TV on the wall. It shows the time and the day of the week. Sam invited Emily to a fancy party. They arrived at a restaurant that was full of celebrities. There, they met Emily's favorite actress, Diana. After a while, Diana fainted in the middle of the dance floor. Someone had poisoned her. Emily wanted to help and decided to find the criminal. She questioned three suspects. Diana's friend Bill said, I've known Diana for ages. I would never hurt her. Diana's best friend said, I was fixing my makeup in the ladies' room when she got sick. And Diana's husband said that she had left him to get some drinks. He stayed at the table and didn't see anything. Emily knew for sure that one of these people was lying. Can you guess who it was? The best friend. There's a bottle of poison in her makeup bag. After dinner, Sam gave Emily a card with these weird images. Emily began to cry and said yes. Why? It's a rebus. It says, will you marry me? Emily and Sam invited several friends to celebrate their engagement. Emily decided to prank the guests. She put a stick in a packet of hot sauce, and then she placed the whole thing inside of a cup. She served the drinks and turned her camera on to film the unlucky guest's funny reaction. Can you spot which cup is the dangerous one?
this one. The straw in it is darker. Sam decided to pay back and prepared another prank. He cut off the bottom of two paper cups. Then he joined the two cups like this. After that, he served the drinks to the guests. But Emily immediately understood which cup was different. Have you guessed too? This one, it's a little taller than a regular cup. One of Emily and Sam's friends, Josh, made a good investment and earned $1 billion. He wanted to give the guys a generous wedding gift. But first, he decided to ask them to solve a tricky riddle. If they managed to crack it, they'd get their dream house. Look at these four groups of pencils. The task is to rearrange them in groups of one, two, three, and four with one single move. Can you help Emily and Sam? They should take the second pencil from these four and put it in here. Now they have groups of one, two, three, and four. Easy! Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one? Hairstylists are using regular scissors, but instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. They started to quarrel, so Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. She was still fuming but also worried. Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? Three prisoners are sitting at a table having dinner, but one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who it is? It's not the guy with the steak and shrimps. The little tag on his shirt reveals he's a chef, and he likes to prepare a special treat for himself. The guy with the jewels shows that he's well off, but in prison, jewelry is basically worthless. It's the third guy. Wealthy people try to keep a low profile in prison, not to be targeted by others. That's why he doesn't flash any valuable possessions or his status. It's Friday and all the students have gathered in a big lecture hall to take the end of term exam. The teacher has been informed that one student is going to cheat. Can you tell which one? Pay attention to every detail. It's student C. It looks as if he's trying to remember what he's read, but he has all the answers written on his hand. Marta was walking through the park near her home in the evening. It was dark and there was nobody around. Suddenly, someone grabbed her from behind and they bolted away. Marta oh no. took off after them. She was pretty sure this person was a woman, but she couldn't make out her appearance or clothes. When Marta ran inside, she saw three teachers. The girl looked at them attentively and soon figured out which one of them had taken her bag. Can you do the same? The woman in the middle wouldn't be able to run away with a cast on her leg. The one on the right doesn't have anything in her hands. Where would she hide Marta's bag so quickly? But the woman on the left has a big shopper bag on her shoulder. A real teacher wouldn't need to carry it in the classroom. So she was definitely the one who took the bag. Jonathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. 
They were aware the guy would return at midnight, so they decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. The prize would be no chores for them for one week. So as to not fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make a pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started to meditate. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. Look at this picture closely and try to figure out who's from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there was no flashlights in the Stone Age, so it has to be this guy here. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife, who had recently lost it. Luke happened to have found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife so Luke can give it back to her? It's the third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to her senses, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who'd been around. Lisa's stylist said that she had applied Lisa's makeup and, indeed, hadn't seen her eat anything. The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said that she'd been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit? It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. In the middle of the night, Dennis woke up because of a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out, but they know they aren't allowed to leave at night. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth. There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel, and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Brenda oh, no. was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet! There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone. And Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up, but now they're covering her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Sarah bought some ice cream on Saturday, but kept the flavors in secret. When she woke up on Sunday, all the oh, ice cream no. was gone. She asked everyone in the house if they knew anything about it. James answered he had gone to work early that morning and hadn't seen anything. Mary said she wanted to have the new caramel ice cream in the afternoon. She felt bad she was going to miss it. John didn't even know there was ice cream in the house. But he was looking forward to trying it. Can you figure out who knows something? It's Mary. The ice cream flavors were a secret. She couldn't be sure there was a caramel taste among them. Can you tell who's a real mermaid here? The second one is a guy, so he definitely isn't a mermaid. The girl on the right is chilling in the sun, and she's out of the water. Mermaids wouldn't do that because they dry out in the sun. 
so the real mermaid must be the one on the left. There were some thefts at the supermarket. There were three cases in total, in January, April, and June. The security camera recorded these videos. The security officer tried to have a closer look and suddenly noticed one detail. After that, the identity of the thief became clear. What did he notice? It was the pregnant woman. The attentive security officer noticed that in January, she looked about six to seven months pregnant. In June, she looked the same. Hmm, seems like it's the mysterious case of the baby bump that was really a canned ham. One day, a thief decided to rob the local bank. He came up with a brilliant plan to dress up as one of the bank tellers and try to sneak into the vault. As he was approaching the vault, he saw a security guard standing right in front of the door. The robber hadn't anticipated this, so he hid and watched the guard carefully when one of the actual bank tellers walked up to the door. The security guard said 12. The worker answered 6 and got in. Then another teller came up to the vault. When the security guard said 6, the person answered 3 and was granted access. The thief nonchalantly walked up to the security guard when the guard said 10. The robber confidently answered 5. He was arrested immediately. So why was the thief's answer wrong and what could he have answered instead? The response has to do with the number of letters in the word. 12 has 6 letters, so the answer is 6. 6, in turn, has 3 letters, so the answer is 3. Well, you can see by now that the robber should have said 3. Looks like he wasn't as brilliant as he thought. 